Good morning everybody, this is Mark Knapp with Alaska Outdoor Adventures. This morning we're fishing at Harding Lake in the Tanana River drainage in the interior of Alaska and we're fishing for large lake trout. <music> trout in this lake can get up to close to 40 pounds. Lots of fish have been caught over 30 pounds in this lake, although it's very challenging. The average time spent per fish in this lake is about 30 hours of fishing. Occasionally someone will catch a couple fish a day, but more often than not, more often than not, we catch no fish a day in a day. And so what we're doing is we are um, jigging bait fish imitations. We're fishing in about 85 feet of water. We're watching the sonar and our intention is to jig and lure a large predator fish into the signal cone of the fish finder. We're going to raise or lower our jig to the same level he's at and induce a chase. When we, if we're successful in getting a chase, we pull the uh, lure away from him, the jig away from him, and to induce a strike. So right now we're in 85 feet of water. I'm jigging at about 65 feet of water and watching the sonar to see if we can get something to come into the, the cone of the sonar. A little bit about the rods we're using. Right now I'm jigging with a um, about a four foot long jigging rod with a spinning reel on it. I have about 35 pound test spider wire with a 30 pound monofilament or 30 pound fluorocarbon leader, a snap and a jig. The jig weighs about an ounce and a half it's about a four inch long white jig meant to imitate the prey species in this lake, which is least cisco. These ciscos are a member of the whitefish family. They're about four, four and a half inches long, and that's the primary bait fish in this lake. And um, so we're using a number of different jigs to try and imitate that. I've got some commercial ones, got some hand tied ones and some spoons, and we'll give you a look at those in a minute. Another rod that we use quite often in here is a rod like this. This is a bait casting rod or trolling, trolling reel. It has a countdown line counter on it, and uh, that's useful a lot in uh, here too. Um, about 50-50 you see people fishing with these and, or spinning gear. Now here's a look at the jig we'll be using. We are using. And then set up. Over by the window. So there's the 35 pound there's the there's the 35 pound spider wire. The and tight jig. This one happens to have marabou and polar bear hide on it, polar bear fur on it, with a little bit of flash in there. Some of the other, some of the other jigs I tied up for this, are, they're just 
all just a little bit different. This one's got some feathers in it and uh, the polar bear with some tinsel. So they all vary just a little bit. Try to figure out what's going to make something bite today. So those are the hand tied ones. These are the commercial jigs that are very popular and pretty effective in this lake. The glow, glow in the dark, the white, and the chartreuse all seem to work pretty good. And here's when I added a little bit of a fish tail to it, give it a little more action, maybe a little bit more, make it a little more interesting. And then of course spoons. Make look like a crippled minnow. So that's what we're doing today. A little bit about the fish finder. That's the fish finder. You need a pretty good one. This one just happens to be a Markham. Vexilars are good. Hummingbirds are good. So what you see there is the bright red blip at 12 o'clock. That's the surface. The red with the green and yellow following it down at about 630. That's the bottom. The blip you see changing from color red to green to yellow. That's my jig. I'm jigging up and down. So what I'm trying to do, again, is get a lake trout to spot this thing, come into the cone, the sonar cone, where I can see him, and induce a strike. To induce a strike, I'm going to jig it in front of him a little bit, get him to chase it. Once he's chasing it, I'll pull it away from him just, just fast enough to get him to attack it. And uh, hopefully get a bite. So I'm going to show you a little bit about the fish house we're fishing in today. This fish house I built. It's a home built. Modeled after the famous ice castles built in in uh, Minnesota uh, it's on a trailer so when we're ready to move it we just crank it up and hook it to the truck and move it wherever we want move it around the lake bring it home we've got ventilation for the heater so nobody gets asphyxiated in here we're wired for power from the uh, generator from the outside if we choose to use that. We have a cabinet with extra supplies. The extra supplies we have are got some MREs in there in case blizzard comes through and we get hungry. Extra bottles of propane for the heater. Another cabinet for extra equipment, tools. We've got rod holders. Those jigging rods are for lakes with smaller fish in them, uh, rainbow trout, char, extra toolboxes, gotta have a fire extinguisher, cup holders, cushions on the fold-up seats, there's our door, coat rack, Propane stove for cooking. There's a propane heater. Got windows. Got the rod holders here for bigger game fish. And the barometer. I've been watching the barometer and it seems to have something to do with how active the fish are on a steadily rising barometer or a steadily falling barometer fishing seems to be pretty good on a steady barometer things are not so good see the blue zone there 
That seems to be where the fishing is the best. You can see right now we're much higher than that. And the barometer is still going up. We're going to watch it. It seems to have something to do. The fish really do respond to a falling barometer or a quickly rising barometer. And we're all the way back around to the benches on the other side. Lure racks over there. I'll take you outside and show you the outside. Give you an idea how this thing is built. We've got floorboards that come out all the way through the center. We can fish as many as nine people in here. We take that folding chair out of the floor and sit on the benches. So I've only got one floorboard out now, some fishing alone today. Got one hole for the transducer, one hole to jig through. Go outside and show you how this thing is built. Got a nice day out here today. A little bit of a snow, snow shower. Sun's trying to come through. I built this out of an old boat trailer. Got a new boat trailer for my boat and used the old one to build this fish house. So you see those angled sea channels there? There's two on each side. There's, there are ramps too that the whole house slides up on when we turn the crank. So what I can do is hitch up to the trailer with the truck, crank the house up with the winch on those slides, and drive away. Move the house around when I want to different parts of the lake or bring it home Bring it, bring it to another lake real easy. We don't have to worry about loading a fish house on a trailer. I've got everything we need in there for a day of fishing or a week of fishing. We can sleep in there if we want. We have, we have um, bunks that fold out, cushions that go on it. So this is Harding Lake. Somebody else going fishing out here today. It's pretty lonely out here. It's the front of the house. This the, got a doorbell on there. Doesn't work. You just got a fish come into the viewfinder and he came up to have a look at my jig. And he's paying attention to it. Get the camera, see if you can see that fish. See that red jig right there? That red yellow blip below my... Oh, he's gone. Oh, there he is again. I'll go down, down to him, see if I can get him to... Look at it. Yellow, that yellow blip just below the, the red blip that's moving. That's my jig. That yellow blip down there is a fish. Oh, he went out of the view of the sonar. Well, we'll just have to jig some more, see if we can get him to come back. That's two different fish I've had in the sonar today already, and I've been the first time I was eating lunch and got caught unprepared and the second time I was too busy talking to you folks on the camera to pay attention I might have that might have been a good opportunity to get a strike okay for now Mark Knapp signing off for Alaska Outdoor Adventures I wanted to show you there's a group of bait fish that moved into the uh, sonar cone. 
at about 40 feet down, 35, 30 to 40 feet down. And a lot of times the big trout are following those, those schools of bait fish. So we bring our, you can see my jig right below the bait fish going up and down. A lot of times those big trout will be following those schools of bait fish. So what we do is we jig just below them uh, to look like an injured minnow, crippled minnow, right below the bait fish. Maybe get a strike from a larger fish, from a from a big trout. You see the uh, bait fish are leaving the sonar. There's a couple left under there. What I normally do is I jig it around 60 feet down. Then when I see something in the show up in the in the sonar cone, the transducer cone, I uh, move my jig over to that depth, either up or down to that depth, and see if I can get anything to strike. A few minutes ago. I was jigging at about 60 feet and a big trout came into the sonar down at about 80 feet down. So I lowered my jig down to him and he started to chase it. He followed it all the way up to about 50 feet and he stopped chasing it. So I lowered the jig down past him and he followed it all the way down to the bottom, but he didn't bite it. I'm lowering down to about 60 feet now. Anyway, he didn't bite it when it was going on its down. A lot of times they hit it on the down when it's going down, when it's falling. He didn't hit it, so I turned around and came back up and he chased it up for a little ways. And then he just uh, quit chasing it. So he, he either wasn't that hungry, maybe just had something to eat today and wasn't willing to go through the effort to catch a fish, or he didn't like what he saw or something. 30 inch lake trout, just caught. Harding Lake. Fished a long time, finally got my first one. I'm gonna put her back. She doesn't die. Been here uh, three weeks. We're set out in deep water, weren't seeing anything. And uh, today we moved the house closer. We're in about 90 feet of water. So we're gonna put our jig in. I tied some jigs. This is tight with polar bear hair, has a lead core, it's uh, got a shiny center of tinsel in the center, got a lead head, and that's when that gets wet and swims it looks a lot like a fish. The most common jig used in the lake is this. It's a a tube jig there's a lead core in there and this is all rubber rubber skirt it looks it's about four inches long when you're jigging it in the water it looks a lot like the least Cisco's that are in here that's what we're trying to imitate so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the lure to this little heavier one set the camera on a tripod and we'll um, start fishing last year I fished for a hundred hours I had 20 chases and I caught no fish. So we'll see what happens this year. This will be my second season here. Fished it for three weeks so far. Caught one fish this morning. We'll uh, fish a little bit more, continue to fish, see what happens. Toast and burritos on the heater. My buddy Keith, say hi Keith. Hello. The March burrito shock here. Yeah. <laughs> so we caught a lake trout uh, a week ago 
on this lake using a uh, self-tied uh, jig with polar bear hair on it. I have to sit down so the fog, so the lens doesn't keep fogging. But anyway, we're going to try and catch another one today and hopefully the lens will quit fogging and we'll be able to do some better filming in a little bit. All right. Started fishing a little bit ago. We're seeing uh, bait fish down in the hole and we're seeing uh, something that some stuff that could turn into bigger fish. It's been blipping green on the on the screen a little bit. And now we're gonna uh, I'm gonna move my jig up up to where they are and um, see if I can induce a strike. Nope, that's not a fish. Bait fish. Kind of near the bottom. Sometimes fish will you'll come in at close to the bottom, like at 70 feet. You'll get them to chase it, and uh, then uh, It'll follow it all the way up to within 20 feet of the surface and then just leave. Sometimes they'll bite it right away, you just never know. So let's see, I'm jigging up and down. Right above some bait fish here. And oh, one's turning into a bigger fish, one's turning bigger. I'll reel it in a little bit. Get him to follow it. He's following it. He's following it. Oh, there's a bite! Got him. Use a bite. Turn that off. Alright, we got one on. Yeah. Check the drag. Drag is a little tight. I'm going to loosen it just a little bit. Yeah. There we go. Alright. I want to count my fish before I get them, but if I land this one, it'll be the second one today. He was all the way at the bottom, like really close to the bottom. He didn't hardly follow it at all. He just, uh, he uh, hit almost immediately when I started to pull it away from him. Is a long way down. He's not in the cone. At the, he's off to the side of the cone fish finder right now, so he's not not even visible on the fish finder. This fish was fairly close to the bottom. I've not even been very visible. Oh, he's pulling out more line. drag is fairly loose. Don't have real heavy line on here, so. Oh, there he is. He's coming up into the hole. Going for another run. It's a Laker. Here he comes. Right out. Oh! Wow. Another nice one. up carefully I'm going to carefully pick them up and and uh, show them to you there he is almost the same size as the one I had a little bit ago maybe just a little bigger very pretty nice dark fish uh, nice colors uh, I love the white fins on it I love the 
The, uh, that was a long fight. This fish is worn out. I'm going to get him back in the water real quick. I don't know what it weighs. Probably about, uh, oh, it's 30 inches long. Maybe it's 12, 15 pounds, maybe. Get in a little closer. Let's get a good look at the jig. All oh, nice colors on it. If I want to make him look real big, I'd hold him way out like that. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna get him off of the hook here. Nice, nice hook. There's the jig. Put him back in the water. There we go. There we go. There he goes. Fun.